arriving from South Africa, straight from the airport. Let's put our hands together. Hallelujah. Let's put our hands together once again as we welcome our father to come back to minister to us. Come on, let's put our hands together. Father, we bless your name. Thank you, Lord, for your presence. Thank you for your mighty touch upon our lives by the power of your word. Thank you, Lord, that when we gather a people, we make an appointment that we all can access. And so we pray that your word, as I teach your people, will build in us strongholds of victory in the name of Jesus. Let your anointing rest upon this service. We call upon your very presence in everything that will be done. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Thank you. Thank you very much. I want to thank God for Bishop Bambai for inviting us. You know, we have a support for quite come with Mama, like I said, but she's uh, on the way, on her way to Kenya to stay. So she's not going to be with us. And I came with um, my son, uh, Brother Tambira. I'm grateful that uh, for him and uh, also Pastor Shonge. Are you here? Yeah, the writer. Pastor Shonge and uh, Pastor Miss Mama Kalasek Mukaba is with us. Thank you very much. 
this afternoon, let's go to the book of Matthew chapter 26. The book of Matthew chapter 26. I'm going to read from verse 37 to 41. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. Then he says unto them, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even unto death. Tell ye here and watch with me. And he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed, saying, My father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. And he comes unto the disciples and finds them asleep. And he says to Peter, What? Could you not watch with me? One hour, watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. May God bless the reading of his word. Um, greet your neighbor, because I'm, um, I see you're a bit downcast. Greet your neighbor and say, are you okay? Are you okay? You say, tell them you did well come into the house of the Lord. I welcome you into the house of the Lord. Amen. Now, Jesus was born with success written all over his face. And uh, that's the picture that I see in every one of you. You are born with success written all over you. In fact, when you lie in your mother's uh, small court, there, right there, you are written success. Before any contamination comes in your life, you are a successful somebody. You, you actually are pure and you've got everything it takes to succeed. The purpose of your life is inscribed on you. The reason of your existence, the reason why you came on earth is right there before you. But the tragedy is, as soon as you are born, as soon as you are born, your mother is the first to start to put some boundaries around your life. And I'm going to deal with boundaries. I'm going to deal with boundaries in these meetings up tomorrow because these are the things that then start to cage you. Your father is the second one to put boundaries. These are traditions in the family. These are things that are do's, don'ts and the do's that are then put around you. If your education system in the nation is also weak, we then also come in, the same education system starts to put boundaries around you. These boundaries are actually limitations that will make sure that you don't become you don't get to exactly what you were born for. It's a tragedy, ladies and gentlemen, because if this continues on, especially when you, as, as you grow up, you also choose wrong friends, they also come and put jurors around you. By the time you get to high school, you've got jurors that have gone so high that you can't even see where you are going. So if nothing is done, you go round and round in life, right in that jural, totally limited. So the people you see today, even in your church, even some of your friends, you must know that the way they grew up shaped the boundaries around them. And so there are certain things they are not able to do because they've got jural. Built by family members innocently, and lovingly. And I want you to know that if it happened to Jesus, it also can happen to you and me. Because Jesus Christ, as he was born with success all over him, they started to enforce boundaries and they could not. The other time they said, we were told that when you want to, give, to divorce someone, you just give a certificate of divorce. And Jesus said, no, it was never like that from the beginning. 
He was coming out of their boundaries. The other time they says, whom do we give this money to? Do we give it to Caesar or not? He said, give me the money. Whose face is this? Give unto Caesar. What is Caesar's? He was coming out of the traditions. Because they would limit him. I want you to know that it doesn't matter where you are born. It doesn't matter where you are growing. It doesn't matter the state of the economy right now. It doesn't matter what's happening. What really matters is in the same economy, you'll find that someone is out of the box and he can actually do things. But I want, to, I want you to know that as soon as you now maybe get to the stage of getting married, you get in in those jurals. And these are the jurors that even limit your marriage. You can meet a very good man who is out of jurors. Maybe because of the way he grew up and the, 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 the family worshipped God. They never touched any witchcraft. They never touched blood. And so there's no juror around the life of that child, of that man. But actually, you can hit him all the time to try and force jurors around him. And these jurors are in the soul. They are not anywhere else. They are in the soul. Now, as you become conscious of your existence and you start to move, as a child of God, I'm discovering that the first thing that you have to be serious about is to remove one by one these jurors. And this is the essence of my teaching throughout even tomorrow. How we address these jurors of our life. The biggest threat to life is not lack of money. The greatest enemy is ordinary. The biggest threat to any marriage isn't infidelity. It's ordinary. Ordinary marriage is like vision. Ordinary, ladies and gentlemen, ordinary church has no vision. Ordinary is the belief that we can't have it more than this. This is as far as we can go. This is what we have and we cannot go beyond. It can be a, a business, it can be a marriage, it can be a, an assembly. It can, this is as far as we can go. So you see, when you start an assembly, you start a church for instance, you are actually coming in like a, planting a mustard seed. Now a mustard seed it goes down into the soil, it dies. Then it starts to come up. I see that same process even as you are running an assembly. It's like you are, you are, when it's still a mustard seed stage, I think your bishop passed through that. Mustard seed. Assembly, when you actually say it's time to give, it's actually the pastor who gives. It's like things are dying, going down. And then, some people start to come. That as they come, those who are put as leaders, some of you actually are given a lot of work to now deal with boundaries around the people you are leading. In whichever area you are. What this calls now is a lot of patience with some people because they, they are not coming from ordinary background. They are coming from different backgrounds with jurors around them. They actually believe things can never go beyond this. There's nothing as dangerous, ladies and gentlemen, in dealing with someone who has jurors around. Because they are limited. They believe we cannot go beyond this. I challenged one pastor, I said, son, are you sure you can have just 10 people before you for 5, 10 years? Are you okay with that? 
And then I started to have time with him for you to, to understand what I'm teaching. I started to have time with him and I started to discover, ah, he has got jurals around him. He grew up in a family where survival was the mod. And anything they got, it was just after a lot of sweat. And they would get very little. And so when, whenever anything beyond what they received came, they would disperse it quickly. It would just go very quickly. So whenever now people come to church, the same person disperses very quickly. If you are given $1,000, you disperse it very quickly because it's, not, it's, it's beyond your limits of the jural. It cannot fit in that jural. These are what we call boundaries of life. The other young man, I told him, let's please just cross the border. Just cross the border. For you to, to understand that just crossing border, going to South Africa, is actually bringing you to breaking some boundaries in the spirit realm. When he, he had just crossed, he vomited. He vomited right there at Musina. Boundaries. He could not take such a breakthrough of going out of the country. Limited. Can you stand success? Can you stand big things? Or you actually succumb and break. So I, I'm going to teach you some things here because I'm speaking about pushing boundaries. Pushing and breaking boundaries. The most frightening thing, it can be your relationship with God. It can reach a limit. And ordinary, ladies and gentlemen, is just dangerous. Now, in this state, God allows pressure. Say after me, pressure. Say after me, pressure. God in his love allows pressure in your life because he has invested so much in your life. So he allows pressure so that you can, you can come out of the boundaries. He gives you pressure. This pressure comes to squeeze you out of boundaries. But it can be misconstrued by you as something of the devil. And you can actually fight and fast concerning what is positive God is doing in your life. When storms of life come, we look rather at what they could be squeezing us out of rather than thinking that they are very negative. I want you to always take anything that comes into your life you have to pray to understand what it is. Otherwise, you fight what God is about to do in your life. I've heard my, with my wife, storms, even as we started faith in God, means storms and storms. And then it, it, it was after some years that then I discovered these storms were actually positive. These storms were meant to squeeze me out of the limitations, the boundaries of the Gurupira family. I got to the Gurupira family in Guruwe because our father told us we, when he died that the, you're only four brothers, there's no other. It's only four brothers. So uh, when we went there after his death, we discovered that there's, there, there's a big family of the Gurupiras. But all of them caged. I haven't started speaking about demons. I'm talking about boundaries inside the mind. I asked them, who is the most educated here? They said, that young man from two. He did from two. For generations, that's the only one. Educated. So when we talked about the Gurupira's 70s, 80s, I was the only one who jumped off that boundary and went to school and did masters in chemical engineering. When I told them that, they were shocked that you did what? They were shocked. 
So, what happened in our life just these few years ago, COVID, to me, I take it positive because it came to squeeze us out of some of the boundaries that are very strong. So God uses some of those things now to make sure that you become. You become. You come out of those limitations and start to fly. And I'm going to teach you exactly how to do that. Listen very carefully to this teaching. I'll take my time and make sure that you come out with something tangible. When I pray for you, it will just be icing on the cake. It will just be icing on the cake because you are, you are already positioned to come out. I cannot be limited. I believe I can plant a church in the world anywhere. Something inconceivable among us, the Guru Peters. Inconceivable among us, my, my own people. You are supposed to serve God in your purpose. That's the most important thing you must know. But the tragedy is boundaries were set in your life and this in the realm of the soul. You are now used to routine and you don't think you can ever come out of Calvary Park. You can never come out and do something from that limited family. That's why God said to Abraham, come out from among your people. Come out from, he was not saying just move physically. He was saying mindset must change. You have mastered the family level. You have mastered the country level. You have mastered the clan level. Abraham, you have mastered the country level, even of provision, even of thinking. You have mastered the clan level of thinking, of, 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 of provision. Now, I want to take you to the world. That's what God was saying to Abraham. You have mastered these three levels, but now I want you to take you to another dimension of doing things. Another dimension of provision. Another dimension of, 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 of thinking. I'm taking you now to another level. Ego life, God wants you to come out now from that limitation to go to another level. Thank God you have mastered this. Thank God as far as building is concerned, you are number one in faith in God ministries. If you did not know, you are number one. But God was saying, we clap hands for that, but there is another world. Can I talk to somebody here? There is another world. You see, if you are the only person in the family who has bought a car, a Morris, you are the only one. I tell you, in that family, you become like a hero. You drive into the compound. Everybody kept sense for you. And if you continue being comfortable, you, are, you will just die in Morris. And it's not about cars. It's not about Morris. It's the mindset that has to be expanded. And so in the apostolic office, I come in that authority of the apostolic to, to drag some of you by force and bring you out of that limitation. Hallelujah. Story is told of a monk. I always give this story. This monk set out on a journey one day in the middle of nowhere and he came to a, a small hut in the middle of nowhere and he found there there was there was a poor family which lived there father and mother and, and two children the monk asked if he could spend the night there and the, the family said you're welcome he got they got the got him in and then they prepared a simple meal comprising of fresh milk, cheese, and cream. And the monk appreciated their simple generosity. When they finished eating, 
The monk asked them how they survived in such an isolated place, so far away from the nearest town. We have one cow, the mother said. We have one cow. We sell her milk to our neighbors who do not live too far away from here. Uh, and, uh, and then we sell some of the milk and we survive on that. We keep enough for our needs and to make some cheese and cream. That is how we survive out here. The next morning, the monk said his goodbyes and set out to continue his journey. Close to the family home, he noticed the cow. The monk pondered for a while and then, before, and then he, he said, I'm going to kill this cow. He pushed the cow down the cliff and the, the cow died. Several years later, the monk again passed by the, that way and found himself in the same road where he had come the previous year. Driven by a sense of curiosity, he decided to visit the family. He rounded the cave in the road and to his surprise, he saw a splendid mansion. The monk knocked on the door. The father of the poor family answered and now well dressed and looking healthy. He recognized the monk immediately, invited him in, inviting him to stay as a guest. While they ate, the monk asked what had changed in the years that he had passed. The father explained how the family's fortune changed. You know, we used to have a cow. She kept us alive. We, we owned nothing else. One day she fell down the cliff and died. To survive, we had to start doing other things, other things. Develop skills we did not know. We were forced to come up with new ways of doing things. It was the best thing that ever happened to us, the death of the cow. We are now much better off than before. The monk smiled without telling them it's him who had killed the cow. <laughs> so sometimes it takes someone from somewhere to kill your cow. That small tuck shop that you have put your everything and say we are surviving, we are better off. So God sometimes comes, comes and kills the cow. So I made a very bad and dangerous prayer. For you here. I said, oh Lord, these are giants. Kill the cows. Come on, stand up and say, Lord, kill my cow. Tell your neighbor, if you can help me, help me kill my cow. You may be seated. You are so dependent on that small thing. And God doesn't know what to do with you because you are just dependent on it. You have put all your all into it. And God is saying, there is more. You are not a, young, a small person. You are a big person. But you are all. You try to look, you can't see. <laughs> you are a big businessman, but you try to look, you can't see. You only see a few meters. So you've maintained that little thing. And because you are also staying among us, family members with the bigger churros, you are actually think, you're thinking you are better. At least... You have got three meals. But there's something more to three meals, son. Come on, I come to get you out of that. There's something more to three meals. I, 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 I come to say some prophecies here. I'm going to tell some people here that you are going to go into continents as great apostles. Do I have apostles in the house? Do I have prophets in the house? Come on. Apostles beget apostles. Hallelujah. The fivefold ministry and apostle Beth is all the four. All the five. And if you happen to have a prophet like you have here, a prophets beget a prophets. 
And so in years to come, I want to see prophets that actually can pick a needle more than he picks. I'm, I'm looking for lady apostles. I'm looking for men apostles. I'm looking for prophets who are women. I'm looking for great people to flood the continents of the world. Rising from eagle life. From eagle life. From eagle life. I'm waiting for that. I'm telling you, I'm waiting for that. I'm waiting for him to tell me, Father, this year I'm releasing four apostles. You know, when we come to ESC, I always ask the bishops, the, 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 the overseers as well, give me who to pour oil on at ESC. Avail me, I pour oil, you will see them. After pouring oil, you will see them rise up to great things. So give me and they give me. And you say, but they are not picking me. Be pickable. <laughs> come on, daughter, come on, son, be pickable. Are you hearing me? Be pickable. Eat your neighbor and say, be pickable. <laughs> Hallelujah. You see, when, when, when some of the limitations that foster the jura walls around you are things that you grew up with. You see, son, when you were at school, why is a quorum denga? Your quorum call go up and you would bump. And you do not listen to teachers. When you come into spiritual things, be very careful because anything you want is hidden in the covering. As I was teaching you in the morning leaders, any personal vision only prospers when it touches a kingdom vision. So whatever you can do, Without touching the kingdom vision, the decrees that we have already given, uh, Operation Nehemiah, uh, supporting the men of God, this is exactly what we have given you. These are decrees. You break that because that's what happened to you when you're at school. You beat teachers. You nearly removed the eye of one of your very, very good teachers and with the with with the with the with the reckon. <laughs> now there it was better. There was nothing spiritual to enhance your personal vision, but here these are spiritual things now. These are spiritual things. So we I gave you a decree. I said pastor's welfare. It's a decree. A pastor must feel good. Ministering, sweating, must also eat. Paul says, if I've given you spiritual things, is it too hard for you to give me the material? Because you, there are things I said in the morning, you cannot get. It doesn't matter how intelligent you are. Because they are in the spirit realm. And they are open to you by the man or woman above you. As he listens to me, he is opening the church, the, 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 the districts. He is opening the region to the blessing I give every day with my wife. If he comes against me, he is blocking everything. It can't get to that old woman in Pelanda. One pastor can just block everything. So when I come as a father, I come to say to you, let the pipe keep open so that when we bless, it goes shh, down and touches everybody. So every leader, everyone, we fight the limitations of the past. We push boundaries. I'm telling you the success of any man or woman that you've known. It came because they pushed boundaries. When those must try for Masiwa, they pushed boundaries. You remember very well 
that he, he, he was almost failing to get a license. Pushed boundaries. It was prayers after prayers pushing boundaries. How are these boundaries built? They are built by the devil as he raises standard. The Bible says when the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord raises a standard against him. The devil copies that. He knows he can only build strongholds in your soul, especially the heart, by raising frequently a standard. As you watch, strongholds are built. A standard, ladies and gentlemen, is an, a measure of excellence that everyone then measures themselves to. Thus, we speak of the Standard Association of Zimbabwe. They raise a standard. Even in the medical field, there are standards that are raised. Doc will tell me the same. There are standards that everything else must be measured to. That's how the devil has captured a whole community. That's how the devil has captured a whole family. By building a pattern of strongholds. No demon yet. No. No demon yet. It's, it's a pattern of strongholds. I talked about carnivals. 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 That time I, I, I pointed at the TV. I said I fired this minister. How can people move in the streets naked? That's a standard. A demonic standard being raised. For every young person in Zimbabwe to watch and measure too. So, as they continue walking around the streets naked, even older people are measuring to it. I can even ask you, what is the standards being raised here in Bulawayo by the devil? You can tell me. We did not start with this level of corruption in Zimbabwe. No. It's a standard that was raised for a long time. We started measuring towards it. Now it's, it's now a stronghold inside. And each time you approach a roadblock, you put your hands in the pocket. When a stronghold is operating, you don't think. Put your hands in the pocket and you bring out some money to give to a policeman, even if, even if he has not asked for it. In other words, you're, you're operating from a stronghold. A standard of hatred in the family. Where brother and sister fight each other every day. If someone does not stop that, it's a standard being raised into generations. A standard of, of, of hatred and bitterness. If in a day when we have a wedding of a young sister, that day, instead of it becoming a beautiful day, it turns out morning as people fight. Because everyone is operating from a stronghold, churao. So I give you here a secret. Anything repeated is setting a standard. Anything repeated is setting a standard. And it's building strongholds inside. Now, the book of, if you can put it there, the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3, going forward. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. These are the boundaries, right? Let's go. Casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. 
In other words, every standard being raised up, up and coming and attacking my mind, I cast it down whilst it's still in the conscious mind, not before it goes down into the subconscious. Because once it is in the subconscious, it's difficult now. Because in the subconscious, it's now a season of conception. So, my children, we hit it whilst it's coming here. Listen, young man, your eyes being thrown on a naked woman or with, with miniskirts in town. When you first see, it's not a sin. It's an attack in the conscious mind. It's not yet a sin. It's when you turn the eyes again back. Now it's going into conception. That's where the Bible says, if anyone looks at a woman with the intention to lust after, he is committed adultery. But at first, no. So when they raise a standard of bitterness and anger in the family, don't be quiet in the family. Say, this is not right. When you say this is not right, you've removed it from your conscious mind. That's how we address strongholds, these jurors. Before they are built in here. The subconscious, the Bible actually calls it the heart. That's why God says, give me your heart, my son. Give me your heart. They're right here. The other time Peter said to Jesus Christ in Matthew chapter 16, he says, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus said, flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my father who is in heaven. In the same chapter, Jesus says, I'm going to die in Jerusalem for all the world. And Peter says, you, you are not going to die. Imagine, that's an attack on the conscious mind of Jesus. Jesus says, get thee behind me, Satan. Right there. You don't keep Jura walls being built. The other time, my wife was in a combi in the 90s. She was going, she was coming home. I think we had one car then, and so she was coming home. And then the women were talking in the combi. They said, men are all the same. Men are all the same. They started to talk, and she stood up. Because if you keep quiet, it's going down into the subconscious. She stood up, she said, no, mine is different. She has destroyed a jurawal. She has refused it. So many of us, we wait. And you now who even make mistakes of watching pornography on your phone. Before the week ends, the jura is six meters. So now you are shocked when you get into marriage. Then you actually say, I am limited. I cannot stand one man. Say, jura you build on your own. You build it on your own. So the first solution I give you, we tackle these things as we see them at first glance. We hit very hard. Right now, near to our house, there's a, there's a, there's a pub. They just built something. In, uh, Friday night, Saturday night, they're singing and singing. Up to around 12. So we stood up like we did the other one, which was closed. They had to close it. We pointed at it. We are closing this thing. And it closed. So th this one came recently. So we have pointed already and said, we are closing you in the name of Jesus Christ. And it will be closed. But in the meantime, what we do up to 12 o'clock, we also put our music high. <laughs> in the bedroom. We put up a video, we're putting, it's high volume, we do not hearing that. Because if you continue hearing, a whole archbishop will be coming here. <laughs> <laughs> T 
Turn to your neighbor and say, guard your heart. Before Jura walls are built. So some of the limitations, we got them ourselves. <laughs> and if you are, if you've got little minds, friends, they build Jura walls. Ah, things are difficult. Ah, we are going nowhere. Ah, he's seeing doom. In the same country, others are prospering. To push off such people. How do you do it some, um, uh, sometimes? Just write it down there. I've given you the first one. Second one. Accept palace assignments. Accept palace assignments. What are palace assignments? Palace assignments are assignments that take you to a world you have never been. Things that you have never done, those are palace assignments. The king was made, King Saul was made, and he said, is there anyone who can play the harp well to come and play for me? Somebody said there is a son of Jesse who can play the harp and play it well. And when they got to him, they asked him to come. He accepted the palace assignment and got into the palace and started to play for the king and as he's doing that, he's not yet the king in the spirit realm. He has been ordained as the king, but physically, he's not yet the king. But he accepts the palace assignment and works in the palace with all devotion. What we have lacked is devotion. When your pastor says, can you do this? That's a palace assignment. Those are palace assignments. You may not know what you are being prepared for. And even your pastor may not know what he is preparing you for. Unless God has given him a, a revelation. So whatever is given to me, I do it with all my heart. And don't feel threatened by palace assignments. Because palace assignments, they are breaking jurals in your life. You go to the palace. Isn't it amazing that when God wanted to, uh, to deliver two million Jews, he took Moses and put him in the palace. Why did God put Moses in the palace? To challenge the jurals that were around him. Because he, he needed now a mindset of a, of a king. To be able to lead two million Jews. He needed a mindset that can hold many people. Yet up, he was just close to his mother and father and they were just limited. When God wanted a king in Israel, he got David into the palace. He caused some madness in the palace. He created a vacancy. And David got to the palace, saved the king in the palace. Not yet a king, but the boundaries are being pushed. If I say to you, let's meet at Miku's hotel in Harare, where do I find you? I say, let me meet at Miko's, one five-star hotel in Zimbabwe, or a Victoria Falls five-star hotel in the, in the falls. Where do I meet you? Some of you, I'll meet you across the road. <laughs> I get to Miko's, then I have to have another job to look for you. <laughs> Jurals. So to break that, get in the foyer, manam. If you don't have water, bring some water with you. Sit there, ask for a glass, 
and be drinking water waiting for me. That expands your mind. Don't be afraid. After church at Eagle Life, watch the people. Click. Those are mindsets. This coming Sunday, refuse the box. Refuse the box. Step out. Greet the business person. How are you, say? How are you, say? Look them in the face. The face are eyes. Don't look down. The face. Look at the eyes. How are you, say? Associate with the people. People who are making it materially. Associate with them. Greet them. Don't get to that other clique which will be talking. Ah, they are. Varukushone, sir. Kone kwa. No. Do you know you can stay among his people who will be talking about others all the time? And you are being limited. Until you are just thinking about one person. Limited. You'll be thinking about your, your, your uncle, whom you say is a witch in the family. Everyone's eyes and mind are on that man. If only he could die. And you end up a witch as well. Those are jurors. So we step out sometimes. Step out. Jesus says, the scripture I've read, remain here whilst I go there to pray. He says to the disciples, remain here whilst I go there to pray. He was talking about a different level of prayer. He says, you disciples are used to this because you've got your boundaries, but I don't have any boundaries. I go there. Why didn't he pray together with the disciples? Why is there, why did he go to another place? Because it's another realm, son. In your industry, there is a place called there. Which the enemy has kept from you for a long time. But I declare you are coming out and you are going into a place called there. Say after me a place called there. Even you heard, you know, people singing. You can actually say, huh? They were singing. But so and so was singing. They danced. But so and so danced. They preached, but so and so preached. That's the place called there. They performed in Fig Arts Festival, but hey, so and so really performed. It's a cold place called there. Do you really believe? So I give you the place called there. In the name of Jesus Christ. Receive the place called there. In your marriage, there's a place called there, son. In your business, there's a place called there. In church, as you minister, there's a place called there. In administration, there's a place called there. Do you receive it in the name of Jesus? Receive the place called there. Receive promotion at your workplace. Be raised at that place in the name of Jesus. You are not mediocre. Refuse the boundary effect that you will die like that. Refuse the boundary effect that you will die with a man like that. That man, God has to change him. There is a place called there. Come on, clap hands to Jesus. There is a place called there. And from today, I want you to yearn for that place. The place called there. There is a place called there in marriage. 
And when I tell you, they know it. When I tell you that the last time we quarreled in, with Mavis was in 1992 in August. It's a reality. I said it in Malawi. And the bishops who were there came to me and said we need an impartation. Pray for us. We counsel with my, my wife great people. Can't even mention. They come to get cancer. There's a place called there. Without boundaries. There's a place called there, son. There's a place called there. You can be talked about in the whole world. When you get there. Yeah, the whole continent of Africa can talk about you, son. In your profession. Hallelujah. The whole of Zimbabwe can start to talk about you in the place called there. But you can decide to remain ordinary. If you don't step out. Because there, there, there's a formation inside of you which says, this is as far as I can go. You actually scream inside if anything extra comes. That's why if I were to give you 10,000 US dollars, within two weeks, it will be finished. And you are reduced to your level of your jurals. But it needs anger. It needs anger. And that's the third thing I'm giving you. You have to be angry. You have to open your mouth. That's the third thing I'm giving. Open your mouth. Learn to open your mouth. There's a man called Jabez, born with pain. And one day, after growing up, he stood up in that pain. And he said, I don't want to cause any more pain. I'm not poor. Oh, God of Israel, have mercy upon me. A man by the name Bartimeo stood up and he says, Jesus, son of David, have mercy upon me. I'm, I don't want this jewel. I cannot be blind for life. I am limited. You have your purposes in my life. I want to express your purposes. So I refuse this. The greatest disfavor, you have been silent. And yet even salvation, you get it by confession. You have to open your mouth. Let hell hear it. Let heaven hear it. That you are fed up with that jewel. You are coming out of it in the name of Jesus Christ. You have to speak. If you are quiet, it dies like that. So I want you to be aggressive as far as jurors are concerned. You have to open your mouth. Hallelujah. Now, over time, you also, some of you, laziness has built more jurors, reinforced these boundaries. You sleep up to 10. Come on, son. Any second, any minute, any hour wasted, it's gone. It's gone. Can you, can you just imagine? This past all five weeks, I've been on the pulpit. Kenya, Malawi, USA. We are just coming back from the airport straight with these guys. From the airport on Saturday straight to preach in Jutungwis. It's That's what I call devotion. You have to be devoted in whatever you are doing. And it doesn't start out there. It starts with within the church as you do miniature tasks. That's devotion. And God starts to expand you. Starts to give you expansion. Gives you more assignments. More assignments. In our youth, we never let our father, the pastor who was called Mukombe, 
We never let him get into the field. It was in the rural areas. Time to harvest. We would take all the youths. We go there. The Levite must not touch that. The job of the Levite is to bless us. Is to touch the spirit realm. And empower us. So you would never, listen, never compare yourself with the Levite. Because when you do that, you stop receiving from him. You cannot, you cannot, he cannot benefit you. He will just be a, 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 a stooge before you. So we would go there. Work in his fields. And waiting for the next assignment. You cannot get the next assignment from God, which is a palace assignment, before you say yes to miniature tasks. So we will to work and work. We never ask for anything. Never. Actually, I say to those who are in the staff here, staff, world of love, staff, wherever, I always tell them you are at a serious disadvantage unless you do extra mile. Let me go at that again. If you are paid in the house of God, you are at a disadvantage because what you receive is all you receive. But if you go extra mile, that will explode you. That's exactly what will explode you. Because you are doing it all the time, not for money, but you are saying, heaven must look at me. It, that will actually explode you. The Bible says, who among you, when he has come from the fields, asks the servant to just give him food? Will he not rather give extra? That scripture is powerful. Do you thank him for duty or extra mile? That means you get more on extra mile. Yet we say as a church, yes, the staff in the church must be paid. That's very correct. But I always say to them, the other time I said to, to Olivia, oh, so you finish exactly at 4.30 when you have a lot of work like this. Now I'm seeing her going on and on. That's exactly what will bless him. That's exactly what will explode him. All this we are fighting to break jurors. I've refused to say no to an assignment. Because that's how we grew up. No, I can't. That one I can't. Praise and worship. Are you there? The leader of the praise and worship, you must say to your team, we are introducing a new song. New songs. We are going to write new songs. Equal life. Faith in God ministry songs. You will hear from them. One will say, ah, that one is too difficult. <laughs> Isn't that so? Are so I want you to say yes I can yes we can let's go repeat it so when I come here I want to hear new songs I don't want the old songs new songs we are most tenama temare Say after me boundaries. So I've commissioned you. New songs. My son, new songs. Let's go. Let's step out. Let's step out. Let's step out into the unknown. Let's go into the unknown. Let's fly. Let's go into the unknown. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So tomorrow, I'll pick some people here and anoint them. 
I was preaching in Chitungwiza. And the Lord said, anoint this young man who was singing, Josh Case, Josh Case. Josh Case, so that he comes from that level to another level. Just like you did to Tatenda Gurupira. And, and uh, he, was, he was in the kitchen. And then he was walking and the clear voice came. This is the third time that I hear clear voice. Anoint him. And I took a whole bottle and poured on him. So the anointing that I'll do tomorrow to some people, it will not be a drop. Don't come in a suit. I will pour. I did that and his music. Oh no, we have never seen something like that. Right now in America, the young man is going. Ah! <laughs> There's a, a, a well-known musician in America. I don't even know his name. I'm not into that. He, he, he said, I want to do a, an album with you. With that end. I want to do an album with you. <laughs> amazing. Amazing. The other time he won 5,000 US dollars. While seated in his office in America. Just like that. Uh, an anointing. Right now he's one of the best engineers in, in Zimbabwe. One of the best in Zimbabwe, yes. <laughs> Just the, the anointing. He did go to school for that. No, 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 he didn't. The anointing. Amen. Is the anointing. Amen. Hallelujah. So by the grace of God, some Jura was break Amen. by the anointing. Amen. Because it's the anointing that breaks. They break. But today, I want you to go back home And think about this. Am I afraid of certain advancements? Are you afraid of heights? Can you stand on the balcony and remain stable? Or you shake? Those are boundaries. If your husband were to come sober, I'm talking of a drunkard, were to come sober tomorrow, and you think it's one day, you find the next day he's sober, would you stand him? <laughs> you are laughing. <laughs> Would you stand that man? Actually, some of you, because of the jurao, the standard that was raised for a long time, you actually love him drunk. <laughs> because the standard was raised for too long. And strongholds were built inside of you. Jurao. So, you would rather have him drunk. I've heard some women say, ah, please, I want him drunk. But God would want you out of the box because that limitation concerning marriage does not end there. You are also limited in many other things. Are you hearing me somebody? Let me end this way. Okay. Oh, I'm still having time. Oh. Hallelujah. So I, I emphasize, start speaking against the norm in your family. Start acting against the ordinary in your family. Start speaking against the norm in your industry. Start acting against it constantly. By so doing, you are pushing boundaries. As you pray, push. Boundaries like Jabez. You don't need to keep quiet. Let me now go to number, number four there. Healing of your earth pushes boundaries. I'll end with that one. Healing of your earth pushes boundaries. Genesis chapter 1 verse 26. 
Now, what I'm touching now is a serious limitation that can actually frustrate you for life. Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 says, And God said, Let us make men in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fall of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps under the earth. So right there, man as he was created, he was created with authority, dominion over all the earth. That means the earth would yield to him. The earth would give to him. Then men fell. Adam fell. And if you go to Genesis chapter 3, the punishment that was given to Adam is very clear. If you can go there, son, Genesis chapter 3, go to what the judgment of God concerning Adam himself. Not the woman, not the serpent. If you know your Bible, just go there. He said to him, uh, uh, let's go to the man. That's the woman. I want the man. And unto Adam he said, Because you have hearkened unto the voice of your wife, and has eaten of the tree of which I command thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it, cursed is the ground for your sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat it of it and all the days of your life. In other words, the earth no longer now yields to you. It no longer gives you its strength. For it to give you its strength, you have to sweat. And men started to sweat. Men started to sweat. And up to today, whether you are born again or you are a non-believer, you have to work the earth. And then it yields after working. Anything said in chapter 3 there, I always emphasize, you can't fast to reverse. You see, in the Bible, you must know things you must not pray for and things you must pray for. Women, you cannot say, I, I, want, I, I don't want to bear, to carry a baby in my womb with pain. Uh -uh. It's normal. As you give birth, there is pain. And then something happened in chapter 4 of Genesis. Something that should never have happened. I want you to go to Genesis chapter 4 from verse 8 to 14. Now Cain talked with Abel, his brother. Listen to this. Talked to Abel, his brother, and it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and killed him. Then the Lord said to Cain, where is Abel, your brother? And he said, I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper? And he said, what have you done? The voice of your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. So now you are cursed from the earth which has opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. When you till the ground, it shall no longer yield its strength to you. A fugitive and a vagabond, you shall be on the earth. And I want to say to you, a human being's blood speaks. And when it's spilled to the earth, the earth closes its strength to the killer. This is where a problem started that should never have been started. It was started by Cain. The voice of, I'm talking of perpetual wealth that can come to your life. I'm not talking about, you know, getting things dubiously. I'm not talking about that. It has its consequences. 
I'm talking of making wealth honestly and durably. As long there is blood shed, the earth closes. And now the tragedy is this. Get me. The tragedy is this. You may not have shed blood, but someone did in your family, and some of them actually did it perpetually, and ended up building strongholds inside of family members' hearts, so that every family member, even during elections, throws uh, one stone. All the people can throw the stones, but yours will kill somebody. It's now a stronghold and now in this case demons have watched the pattern in the family and now demons have taken hold of the strongholds. Strongholds don't start demonic. No. Strongholds, once they are watched for too long and they are not addressed, then the demons come in. And when they come in, they come in possessively. To make sure that you perpetuate the same thing that was done before. Exodus chapter 34, 6 and 7. You know that scripture. Exodus 34, 6 and 7. And the Lord passed by before him and proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abound in goodness and in truth, keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity, and transgression and sin and that will by no means clear the guilt visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and upon the children's children unto the third and to the fourth generation so the blood that was shed in the first generation closes the earth to the blood of the family so that the earth cannot yield I want you to know that where you are seated that's earth this is F. And you too. This is F. So even you, you cannot come out with ideas when the earth closes and refuses to give its strength. Every clo all the clothes you're putting on, that's F. That's F. So anything, all this, that's F. Where someone goes into an industry and does very well, you get in there, you struggle. The earth is closed. There is no way blood can fall to the earth and the earth remains yielding. Never. Now, you come to Jesus. Now, follow me. You now come to Jesus Christ as your personal savior. You have done very well. By coming to Jesus. Why? Because when Jesus died on the cross of Calvary, he also shed his blood to the same earth. Bah! To heal the earth for you. To heal the earth for you. So that you don't live in death. You live in life. That's the beauty. So what's the problem? A child of God still struggling for the earth to yield. What's the problem? I'll give you an answer that will destroy strongholds in your life and you become different from your brothers. Different from your sisters. Different from many even in your church. I repeat the question. Why you gave your life to Jesus Christ whose blood at Calvary touched the same case, case the earth and he healed it? Because Cain shed the blood. Abel's blood cried before the Lord. But Jesus' blood cried mercy. Abel's blood cried revenge. Jesus Christ's blood cried mercy. 
So you now receive Jesus as your personal savior. So why is the earth refusing to yield? When I discovered this secret, that's why the God, God gave me the hallmark of love. I want you to put 1 John chapter 3, verse 14. And I want, let me have four people here. Four people here. Maybe let's do it right here. Four people, join your hands here and make a circle. Then another four, join your hands and make a circle. Come on, young guys. Four. I want you to see this picture. Can you come closer, guys? Let's come, come, come closer here. All right. All right, right. First John chapter 1, verse, first John chapter 3, verse 14. We know that we have passed from death to life. What's the reason? Because we love the brethren. He that does not, that loves not his brother abides, abides, underline that, abides in death. He was not writing to heathens. He was writing to children of God. Come, son. As you serve the Lord, as you continue in the house of God, I want you to know that there is in the spirit realm, there's an arena of death. Get inside. There's an arena of death. And in this arena, the death is not dying of the flesh, being put in the graveyard. No, he was not writing about that. He's talking about everything around you dying. The earth refusing to, to yield to you by reason of your location. It's not about whether you fast too much and pray. And no, 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 your location. It's a location of death. So no matter how much God would want to give you, he cannot give you in that location. I hope you are hearing me. There's no way. You are, yes, you gave your life to Jesus. But because you've got bitterness, you've got anger, you, you, you've got revenge, you are living in an area of death. Brethren, have you noticed like when a, a church splits, for instance, you've seen churches split in Zimbabwe. A church splits. You actually see the other group is the right group. They are, they, they are the right people. They are being taken advantage of. They, they are right. But you get shocked as the church goes forward. This side, they've got serious mishaps. <laughs> accidents after accidents. People dying. Why? They are bitter. So in their right, they are living in a wrong location. And there's nothing God can do as long you are here. Because you are in the life principle of the kingdom of the devil, although you are in church. So, Paul, the writer of the book of John, John says, now we know. Oh, I like this scripture. It's my scripture actually. Now we know that we have passed from death to life. And the reason is, we love the brethren. Oh, come on, give the Lord a hand of praise. We love the brethren. So in a family, where everyone is bitter concerning what happened in the family. Everybody is bitter. Jump out, my daughter. Jump out from that arena of death and go into the arena of life. It doesn't matter how much they wronged the family. You know those, it doesn't matter how much they wrong the family. Jump out of that dungeon of death. You will 
struggle for this thing called earth to yield its strength. Start a business. That's F. It refuses. Why are things closing? You come for prayers. Demons are cast out. But the F is closed. The, the, the demons are out. But they left you in the arena of death. And they will soon come back. Because that's their arena. So they grew up telling us, oh, yo, yo. my father saying, we ran away from Guru because there, there are witches there. There are witches in Guru. They ran away from Guru. Witches, they then told me after my father died that your father left in 1932. And he came to Harare. Actually, he was the first man to do ballroom dancing. They had my so the hall in Bari. My old man used to do ballroom dancing there. After running away from witchcraft, he thought he was going to prosper. Even in Arare, in the lights, the earth was closed. My father used to do mapisa. What do you call that? Horse rest. He would bet for anyone. If he gives someone the figures, he wins. Actually, someone thousands of dollars. But if he gets to dream and do it. It's a wrong thing. <laughs> the earth closed. So blood spilled. It goes to the fourth generation. And in the fourth generation, if someone kills again, it's another four generations. The earth closed. So right now your earth is closed it's not you who started it. But you have something to do about it. You can do something about it. So we go to their homes. We love them. I just come to see how you are doing. Oh, we are okay. They are shocked why you came. They are shocked. Because 10 years you have never been with them. Not one day. They are shocked. You show them the love. You bring a, 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 a loaf of bread and some milk. You leave it there. Even if they throw it away, no problem. You give the love. Are you hearing me, somebody? You give the love. You, you send some airtime. There's a daughter. I shan't mention her name. Maybe she has already, she, she, she gave a testimony, I don't know. Here. She said, Baba, I've got a problem. Not getting married. And I said, is there anyone? And I quickly go to that question. Because I know that's the greatest door human beings open. I said, do you have anyone against? He said, I cannot see. She said, I cannot see my father. You cannot see my father. It's a long time I've not been there. I said, okay, you want your breakthrough badly? All right, let's do this. I want you to start to love your father in action. Three levels. Number one, you are going to purpose in your heart to forgive him. Number one. Number two, you are going to confess it with your mouth that I've forgiven so and so on. Baba. Number three, you start to do things that you would never do to them. And I prescribed, I said, buy a suit and go and give your father. She did that. I think it was only a year. A year, or, or, I think it was a year. Somebody saw her and whistled. You, you have not even one person who says <laughs> even one person. We have passed from death to life because we love the brethren. And right now she has a baby.
an act of love brought him from death to life. Brethren, what I'm teaching here is a principle. And principles cannot be broken without consequences. So it doesn't matter you hate Elder Sorenson, you hate Deacon Sorenson, you hate this brother. If you want life, or even your pastor, because as we pastor, we make mistakes here and there. We are human beings. But it must not come to hate it. When you hate, you block your life totally. Worse now with a priest, a Levite, a, 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 the God servant, the, the umbrella over you. Because these are my extensions. I can't be everywhere all the time, but uh, these are my extensions. You make a step because you never know what they did in the family. Why is it that whatever you touch, you struggle? You never know what they did. It's the only two things that bring the earth to shut. And I, I don't have time to go to the other one. But it's witchcraft and bloodshed. These two bring poverty. You never know. So clear your life. You lose nothing, my daughter, my son. You lose nothing. Hey, I was holding, hey, hey, I was holding stuff against you. Forgive me. So where are you asking for forgiveness? You are asking on that issue that I was holding you. I was angry with you. Forgive me. You don't wait and say, but you also had a problem on this and this. Then you are making a big mistake because you are withdrawing. Stay on your course. You want your world open. You don't want it closed. You can live in the same Zimbabwe with an, a sky of iron or brass and an earth of iron. When the earth closes, it's iron. Read the book of, I think it's Deuteronomy chapter 28. It's iron. You take a hole, it's in gate. Take a hole in the energy industry, it's in gate. The earth refusing to yield. One act. One act, my son. This one transfers you into life. Thank you guys. Thank you guys. Let's clap hands for them. Now we know we've passed from death to life because we love the brethren. Hallelujah. How do we heal the earth? How do we heal the earth? I've just given you one. Repentance. Second Chronicles seven fourteen. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. I will heal their land. We repent. And in repentance is exactly what I've given you. Because in repentance, it's not just a word of mouth. No, 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 no. In action, you start to do things that you would never do to, to that family or that person. You start to do. You've been in a marriage, son. Your earth can be closed. When you're bitter with your wife, bitter with your husband. That atmosphere is not an atmosphere of progress. Where you are quarreling the whole night. Each one coming from their box. It's an atmosphere where you start to go down. And then even when you are here, number two, speak to the earth. It hears because the Bible says the earth had closed because the blood had spoken before God. So the earth hears. Jeremiah 22 verse 29. Let's read it. Jeremiah 22 verse 29. What does it say? Jeremiah 22, verse 29. 
Stand up and speak to your earth. Oh, earth. Oh, earth. 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 Hear the word of the Lord. Now, as you repeat this, you are thinking about your industry. You are thinking about where you are working. Be it even ministry, everywhere. By the way, when you are leading ministry, you are leading earth. Why? Because these are human beings. This is earth. Speak again. Earth. Oh, yes. Yes. Hear the word of the Lord. Let's clap hands to Jesus. Deuteronomy, you sit down. Deuteronomy 32, verse 1. Deuteronomy 32, verse 1. What does it say? Deuteronomy 32, verse 1. Give ear, all you heavens, and I will speak. And hear, O earth, the words of my mouth. So somebody, when you have done what I just said, you've got the right to speak to your earth. Move around in that company. Move around in that church that you've been given. Move around and speak to the earth. Hear me. Respond to me. Hear me, O earth. Isaiah 34 verse 1. Uh, that 34 verse 1. Come near you nations to hear and hearken you people. Let the earth hear and all that is the rain, the world and all things that come forth for, of it. And then the last stage, praise God for the earth to yield. Praise God for the earth to yield. Psalm 67, 5 to 6. Psalm 67, 5 to 6. Let the people praise thee, O God. Let all the people praise thee, O God. Then shall the earth yield an increase. And God, even our God, shall bless us. Then shall the earth yield an increase. And when the earth starts to yield, it's like you are dreaming. Your struggles has been a closed earth. That's all. And mainly is the issue of the arena where you are operating from. Africans were given this bitterness. So we pray. I, I really thank you all together with your leadership for maintaining the church here. And it's a mixed church. Shonas and Develes and, and some coming from other tribes or Kore Kore like me. You know, and there's, there's no segregation this is a serious achievement here. It's a serious achievement. Because the truth of the matter is that there was a standard raised for too long. And the enemy is saying, Zimbabweans cannot be one. There has to be a division. As if it is like divide and rule from even the colonizers. The same thing with the Tutsis and Hutis. They did not just come in 1994 and started killing each other. No. But one million people died. It, it, it did not just start like that. It was a standard raised for a long time in the homes. In the homes. You've got a long nose. You are a Tutsi. You are light-skinned. You are a Tutsi. My children, we are not Hutus. We are Tutsis. We are not Tutsis. We are Hutus. It was fostered for a long time. Raised the standard. Until it culminated into genocide. In 1994. And I like what the president did when he came to power. Kagame did very well. I only have a problem with his closing of 6,000 churches. 
but he did very well. Just removed from the ideas, this thing of saying, Hutu, Hutu. We are one people. We are one people. We are one people. And that's it. He did very well. And you get to Kigali. I've never seen such a smart city. It's like Cape Town. In the morning, there's, there are trucks cleaning the roads. With those things get water. Cleaning the roads. By the way, Blanta is clean. I was shocked when I was there. Hey, you can eat sadza there. In the street. Very clean. We are getting there. <laughs> ah, you don't believe it. Turn to your neighbor and say, we are getting there. How many believe it? This is our nation. We are born here. I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> I was born here. Amen. I'm just here. I'm enjoying and God is giving us the breakthroughs whilst we are here. Hallelujah. So these things started as standards. And built strongholds. And some strongholds make the earth close. And this is how we break it. We get into life. Get into life. Don't stay there. I always tell you, I think I've taught you here before, that even a witch, my daughter, a witch has no power over a child of God. So why should we worry and say, a witch must die? What for? Because that's another doctrine. It's not in fig. Witches must die. Beg to send her. Beg to, ah, because that raises hatred in the church. And accidents, and accidents. People die. You raise bitterness amongst the people. And they stay in death. Instead of staying in life. You see, the problem of people is they read the Old Testament and just apply it as it is. Like for instance, you remember when in, in Numbers chapter 25, when the children of Israel have sinned against God, and then uh, the, 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 the plague is now starting, and the people rush to the tabernacle of meeting, and they're rushing there to pray and ask God so that the plague stops. That's when a young man, uh, an Israelite, comes with a prostitute in front of the congregation. I think he was drunk. In front of the congregation, parading pornography. That's raising a standard. But the Bible says, Phineas took a javelin, followed them to their tent, and pinned the both of them, killed them. Then the Bible says, God said to Moses, Phineas has reduced my end. Because when man sins, God shakes with anger. Somebody or something must die. That's the original. Somebody or something must die. Whenever there is murder in the family, God shakes. Somebody must die. Something must die. So Phineas in the Old Testament did it for God. He killed this man. And God said, my anger has been reduced. There is a hunger and dry, the land is dry in the time of David. And David goes before God, he inquires of God. He says, why is the land so dry? Why is the earth closed? That's another good example. Why is the earth closed? And God said, it's because of Saul. Your predecessor. Saul killed the Gibeonites. And yet in the book of that, that's Joshua. The book of Joshua chapter 9 and 10. You people made a covenant with the Gibeonites that you would never kill them. But he killed them. And so he said what do I do? He said go and talk to the Gibeonites. 
went, they, their blood touched the earth. The earth is closed. The heavens are closed. You're shocked. In 2008, when the earth is closed, did you see that? Oh, blood has touched the earth. 2008, you are shocked. Even bananas refused. Mangoes frowned at us. No mango was there. The earth is closed. One tree survived. Which one was that? Where you were making even drinks from. You have forgotten. Huh? I don't know what you call it in in, in Muchagat. What is it? Yes. Hacha, yes. That's what you got all over. You ended up making porridge out of it. And you were competing with donkeys. Actually, the chiefs would arrest people if your donkey was seen eating the hachas. When the earth closes. You know what happened. Then the Gibeonites said, you will have to give us seven of the men of that family that killed us and we will kill them and hang them throughout the whole day as they drip blood. Seven! I think David went to God. God says, do what they are saying. So when he went, now listen to this. When he went into the house of Saul to select the men, the seven men, he had to be careful with the children of Jonathan. Because he had a covenant with Jonathan. He could not touch those. Because it would have been another problem. Seven were killed and hung the whole day. Blood dripping, touching the earth as a healing mechanism for the earth that had closed because innocent blood had been touched. What is number seven? Is the number of God. So Jesus hung on the cross. We are now in the New Testament. Jesus hung on the cross the whole afternoon. He was there. His blood touched the earth. Number seven touched the earth. So if you take the Old Testament literally like that, you will kill in this time. It was a shadow of what Jesus would do. He says, the Bible says, God does not love the death of a sinner. He does not love the death of a sinner. The prostitute is sinning. The murderer is sinning. Sin is sin. God loves, does not love the death of a sinner. So we love people. Let me end this way. We love people. As we love everyone, even the witches, we are detached from their activity. If we hate them, we are attached to their activity. Because the Bible says in Proverbs 26 verse 2. Put it there. I've, I've, I've put it some time here. Put it there again. Proverbs 26 verse 2. I want us to go over it. All of us. Let's go. One, two, three. As the bird by wandering. As the swallow by flying. So the curse causeless shall not come. The opposite is true. A curse with a cause will land. So if you love the witch there is no cause. If you hate the witch, there is a cause. Even a witch who is learning will curse you. So we love people and get detached from their activities because we stay in life, not death. If you wondered why witches all, always witches, they want to start you. They are looking for a cause so that there is an attachment and they can curse you. 
pastor. We love people. You know, I was preaching the other time at World of Love and a witch came on a Friday. Witch came and says, Baba, I don't know how to thank you because this thing, I don't know how to get rid of it. But you've just hinted in the meeting how I can get rid. I don't like it. I just wake up in the houses of people. See, there's witchcraft that somebody just inherited in the blood. Never looked for it. It was just there. He says, I just wake up in the house of the people and in the morning I'm so shy because I, I don't even know. Maybe that woman saw me in the night. So when I meet them during the day, I hide. Because I come into their homes almost every day. He says, but you said something very true. For me to be successful in any house, we must have quarreled. That's the secret. Now you are, you've got bitterness with your uncle. What if he's a witch? <laughs> <laughs> Do you really know what you're doing? You actually say to him, you will see it. When you don't even have any witchcraft, you see what? <laughs> and some of you, you're making mistakes. You say, because I'm a Christian, you will see it. Jesus is not a witch. Jesus loves people. So love him. Love that woman. <laughs> even your wife you are sleeping with. How do you know she has got inherited witch, witchcraft? <laughs> and you even beat her. Oh. Yes. There is a cause now. Don't you know which is the always say you will see it. But if you check, you will have quarreled with them. Without that, they cannot. She confirmed to us now, Mama, that this is, what you were teaching is correct. We will never succeed in a home where there is no cause. He says we struggle. No matter how we hate the person, we struggle to bewitch him. That's where the love is effective. When you love people, Paul says be at peace with all men. Especially in a big church like this. And I will never say there's no witch here. I can never say that because. No, I'm telling you the truth. Because if some have it without looking for it. It's just in the blood. There's a lady who came to me and said when I wake up in the morning, every morning I spit blood. Uh, I mean, my God oh my God. I don't know where it comes from. My teeth are okay. And sometimes I wake up, I wake up with grass all over. So you, you, you are one of the foolish people on earth to have enemies in a big church like this. You are very foolish. Are you hearing me, somebody? So we love people and we detach from their activities that are bad. Even among his pastors in Vig as a whole. All among us, all the overseers and the, yes, I would want to have saints. But you, ne you don't know what people are struggling with. Your father knows. So just love everybody. And I'll never stop and say you are no longer a pastor's wife because you are still struggling with witchcraft. <laughs> I'll never say that. Because I know it's a journey. I am a father of love. I'm a father of love. I will be patient with you. Until witchcraft goes. I do that. 
So even as you associate with other pastors, my kids, you must know that. And I'll never come out and say so and so is struggling with witchcraft. I'll never say that. <laughs> uh. <laughs> you beat your wife <laughs> with her background. She wakes up in the middle of the night, she looks at you. <laughs> and you are going, <sighs> You are not wise. Ah, you are not wise. The scripture that you can take home, be at peace with all men. Are you hearing me, somebody? You want to progress in life? You want every jurao broken? Be at peace with all men. Hallelujah. Be at peace with all men. I'm giving you something very important. Even your husband. Can't you see that anger is not normal? Listen, all witches, they are beaten. When they hate somebody, it's for weeks. What is a sign in your life? There is witchcraft blood. Because you never look for it. But what's the sign? You can't forgive easily. You can go for months holding on to somebody. But now that's the thing that limits you. You can't progress in life until you release. And you could have reasons. Genuine reasons, good reasons. It doesn't matter. As long as you are bitter, you are in the arena of death. And you touch witches all over. By the way, when you are bitter with this one, you are also going to be bitter at work. Bitter at school. Bitter. bitter one, listen, bitterness kills the one carrying it. It does not destroy the one who gave it. It destroys the one carrying it. It's like I've given you the girl of a, of a crocodile. Do I die or is you? So practice what I did, Vanang. I think your bishop knows what happened to me with my wife before faith in God ministry started. If it had happened to you, yeah, you would not be in the kingdom. I've just been called by God. And we, you know, I've never seen anyone genuinely called by God who just start to go up in full-time ministry. There's nothing like that. Called into full-time ministry, there's always a slump. Pum! It's like God wants you now to depend on him, not people. Go down. We went down. Then I started a company to try and jag ourselves. And, and in that company, we're manufacturing these hair products. We are really depending on that now. My wife also is added sold to injury. She has resigned too. She said, I'm also cold. I said, ah, you wait because <laughs> remain waking because you are begging me. Uh, she left. She said, each time they are giving me salary, it's like I'm stealing. So uh, I said, hey. So I started this company. It was going now. It was really carrying us through. And one day, just one day, from Norway, my superintendent, the person, we had all the formulas is taken by a, 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 an associate pastor in the church. In our previous church. A, a, an associate pastor, a person I trusted. He just goes, he takes this man. He says, let's, let's form another company called Redemption Chemicals. Let's redeem people from Gurupira. <laughs> they started that church, that company. They are manufacturing exact products. My exact products. I come into the factory one day. I see there's nothing that has been manufactured. I said, what's happening? What, what? He said, no, 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 he has gone. Ah! The shop in town needs these chemicals. I looked there for uh, our old man, uh, Baba Bishop Taderera. 
Bishop Tadera was working for me. I looked for Bishop Tadera. I said, you are working close to this man. Can you manufacture at least two batches today of pain lotion? He says, I can do that. Uh, you? <laughs> Bishop Tadera. <laughs> ha! Loyal man. But he manufactured poison. I'm seated in the office, I'm going, I go to town, I'm seated in the office, you know, and, and then women start to come. Five of them. One with the, this whole side gone. The other one, the whole head. They come in. They could have sued me. Now each time I'm seeing them come, I go to the till the till and you empty the till and give her something. Please go and help. Another one comes. I said, is there anything else? And each time I'm seeing the face of that verse. The devil actually advertises him to you. He is the cause of all this. And I was drawn to hate him. And go. Yes, and there's another one. This young man... <laughs> This young man, he then comes to confess because I would say, where is thyroglycolic acid? Where is it? Very expensive chemical. Man, we are bringing it from South Africa. Thyroglycolic acid. I'm a chemical engineer by profession, so we're dealing with chemicals. Very expensive chemical. During that time, when your time of going up has come, things rise up. Don't take them negatively. That time, the young man comes to me later. When I was out of the woods, he, came, he says, forgive me. I don't know where he had received a message, a powerful message rebuking him. He says, forgive me. I would just, you used to say, I'm missing. I would just pick one and go into Mukuvisi River and point. I said, but why? He said, I just hate it. So, behaviors of people in the church, you really have to be patient because some are passing through stuff they don't even manufacture. It's all in the blood. Be patient with each other. I said, son, kneel down. I forgive you. Yeah, I had a loss, but I forgive you. I'm in Malawi preaching and I see that pastor come. The voice says, impress him. Ha! Huh? <laughs> Impress him! I said, Lord. In the morning, I said to my wife from Malawi, Mount Mulanji, we were preaching. We are going to see that pastor. He said, Ah, oh, it's too early. Baba is too early. I said, We have to. We went to his house. You have to force yourself. Pride aside, because you die poor. Think you will not be what it is today if I had held the ga garage to say I will never forgive. You remember, when you are going from one level to the other, you have to forgive in this level. Jesus had to forgive in this level. When he says, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing, then he was ready to go to heaven. You can never attain the next level in bitterness. Never. And so I for we went there. As soon as we got to the house of Fakose, we saw my superintendent. He saw me, he ran behind the house. He was already manufacturing the chemicals behind the house. I get inside. The pastor was not there. The wife was there. She nearly cried. I said, no. We hugged each other. We said, no, it's nothing. And you know, once you make the first step, then God gives you the love and the tears. Ha! Ah, we hugged him. We loved him. We said, where is pastor? We said, no, he's just gone outside. My gates hung at Zimu. Life is now going down. Hugged him. And we came out there smiling with my wife. Said, we have done it. We have done it. The other pastor who did, uh, 
I like him. He's, he's late now. He came in 2001. He says, Guru Pira, I don't want to miss heaven. And he was speaking prophetically. He said, I don't want to miss heaven. What we did to you was not good. Forgive us. I forgive. And then, to clear me, God said, write a check of $40,000. It was a lot of money then. You know that. A lot of money. $40,000. Give it to him. We went to Mutare. We gave the check of $40,000. They were shocked. You do things, then you clear. You have to do things, otherwise you won't clear. Then Fig was born. And Fig is moving from a better foundation. So tomorrow, I'm going to pray for everybody. And I'm going to start with people that God is showing me. I want to anoint you. I'm going to anoint you. I will need anointing oil. I will need anointing oil tomorrow. If we can start a bit early with the, with the leadership so that I have more time with the people. I will not preach much in the afternoon, but I want to have time to pray for people. And, uh, but tonight, kill your cow. Kill your cow. Or else I'll kill it for you tomorrow. Kill your cow. Because you are satisfied with that small thing that is just making you survive, but hey, it's limiting you. So you are limited in your thinking, you are limited in uh, expanding to anything in life, you are just limited. It's a powerful time that the Lord has given us. And I don't, don't want even sickness to limit you. You must be free to go. You must be free to go. Any form of sickness must give you way to you. I'm just operating in the apostolic, not the prophetic, but the apostolic. Where we break furrow ground so that you operate. You already have a prophet here. Unless God gives me specific word, I will say it. But otherwise, I'm coming in, in the apostolic, to break furrow ground so that you move. You start to walk. Did you get this teaching? Did you understand it? The earth must yield to you. The earth must yield to you. Because you see, when men sinned, Adam sinned, all the minerals hit. They, my man, doctor, they were in the surface. <laughs> there were four rivers coming into the Garden of Eden. Supplying the Garden of Eden. Not going out. Supplying. And the minerals were there. The bronze, the silver. Animals were not hiding. Agriculture was not hiding. When men sinned, everything went down. Hiding. These things here. I've given you the solution. Because you had a question, I'm born again by why is the earth not yielding? I've told you. I've told you. Stay in life, don't stay in death. And then I've told you, be aggressive with your mouth. You are not given that mouth just for sadza. You are given to speak against spiritual things. These fortresses, you must speak against them. Say, you have to leave me, I cannot die like this. I'm shifting boundaries in the name of Jesus Christ. Now when I look at my life, I would definitely be a pauper right now. Yeah, not with the Gurupira family. All those that have jumped into the blood of Jesus, they are the ones who are really doing it in, in, in Gurupira family. 
No, I think you know my daughter. My daughter in uh, in Dubai, who is now in um, Jordan, Miranda, loves the Lord. There are all those who came into the blood, and they mean it. They are not joking. They jump, but otherwise, it's not that easy in the group. Yes. Never. If you come to Jesus, then you hate people. You stay in death. And you cannot go anywhere. Give the Lord a hand of praise. <laughs> Bishop. Let's stand and celebrate our Father. Hallelujah. Let's celebrate our father, the Archbishop and Apostle. Let's go before God. Let's begin to pray. Pray for your life. Rika Shaka Mandala Bakata. Father, we are praying for your word. We thank you, Holy Father, for touching our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Oriya Handa Kamamusa Mundeketa. Hali Pandia Mahusa Kutenda. Lord, we are praying. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray, O oh Lord, O oh Father, for your presence. We pray for your anointing, your glory, and your grace. In the mighty name of Jesus. Oraka toma murenda liya bahala bakata. Mose prahandia mundeketa. Lipaga husaka tuturu mungenda. Father, we are praying. We ask of your power. We ask your grace. O oh Lord, help us in the name of Jesus. Ramanda kahuta mulenda, Marienda mamutsutu kumunda mandare, Alita mungandela makamutsata milera, Le palita imakahushema, Muse prata kamindai. O Jesus, Jesus, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Raka shama ndelebelebeta, Rika tutu munga mundeka husa kabutare. Mahunda mundela, mundela, mundela. Mahuka husa tutu munga murenda. Alita murenda kakututulu mundera. Manda hunde, hunde, hunde rekai. Aseta haleka hutatumare. Roma hundaka hututurumare. O samalera. Shemali katutuma. Renda mamulenda, mulenda marakakuma. Etsi shiti muka mutande. Mutande malianda la makashera. Orenda mutsutu kumorea. Ripa kamundai. Continue praying unto the Lord. Continue praying unto the Lord. Speak. Open your mouth. In the mighty name of Jesus. Yes, the earth must yield its fruit. In the name of Jesus. To you. For you, Raka Shabaka, O earth, O earth, in the name of hear the word of God, hear the word, hear Raka Tapa, Renda Mototo Boka, Asenda Kahututu Murenda, Ripa Kalabakatu, Ripa Kapakata Turoboda, Zapa Rata Kata, let's pray, let's pray, Roto Kopo Kapakata. Rendeka toto munderebeka. Rianda ka hushushu mungenda. Oreta munenda mukabutari. Musanda ka hututuru mungari. Let's pray, let's pray, let's pray. Speak to the earth. Speak to your life. Speak to your heart. Pray today in the spirit. In the name of Jesus. Orenda ndalabakasha. Orenda. We shall not reject her. Palace assignments, Holy Spirit, help us, oh my Father. Oreka mundere makata, ratu tutu budarabada. We shall not stay in the arena of death. In the name of Jesus, renda kabakasha. We come out of the arena of death. We go to the arena of life. In the mighty name of Jesus, pray unto the Lord. Yes. I want you today to pray, even walk around, 
come out of the arena of death. Refuse to remain in that arena. Walk out by faith. In the name of Jesus, go into the arena of life. Rabba koshaka ota. Yes, amahanda kahata rabba. Mahuta munde na muranda kata. Rupa pa 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 pa. Runda nda 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 nda. mo 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 saka. Ratiti kamunga nde nde nde. Hali ratata nda makakukutu. Murainda mamurenda muranda kakata. Jesus, Jesus. Robo kata tata ramanda. Murende re mende re bede. Osa, 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 osa. I refuse an earth of iron. I refuse a sky of brass. In the name of Jesus. By staying in the arena of death. Rosha makaka kaka kaka. Osa manda hande re manda. O ba 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 ba. The grace, the grace to be at peace with all men. The grace, the grace, the grace to be at peace with all men. So that the earth may yield its, yield, its, its fruit, O oh God. So that it may give, O oh Lord, me its strength in the name of Jesus. Nothing of mine shall die. Nothing of mine shall die. Oh, Shakato Toroboda. Yes, Amanda Labada. My children shall live. I shall live. You shall live. Refuse death. Refuse death. Refuse death today. In the name of Jesus, oh Lord, let me dwell in the arena of love, the arena of love, the arena of love, the arena of love, oh, to oscillate in the arena of love, oh yes, oh Father, to operate in the arena of love, Mandeka Otakata, yes, Amanda Kata. Let's pray, let's pray, let's pray, let's pray, let's pray, let's pray. Everybody from the back to the front, open your mouth, speak right now, speak to your heart, speak to the earth in the name of Jesus. You must prosper after this revival conference with the archbishop. Our lives must change, the earth must begin to yield its strength. For us, in the name of Jesus, we refuse, O oh Lord, to live in poverty. Even as a church, we are praying, O oh Lord, Mahoka Hotakata, Renda Makakutuma, Masa Manda Manda, Pray for yourself, pray for your family, pray for your children, pray for your wife, pray for your husband, pray. Raka Shabada, prayer, 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 everybody, prayer, 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 Raka Shaka, Taka, Taka, oh, Ramandara, Ramba Gufira Murumbo, Shabaka, Taka, Raka, Toto Romundara, Baba, 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 oh, Shamandara, Bada, Baba, oh, Randara, Baba, Bazarangu, Ariskurova Simbi, Bazarangu, Ariskurova Simbi, Raka shakata, my hoe shall not hit iron. In the name of Jesus, it shall not hit an earth of iron. I pray, ora for life, 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 long life, long life, in equal life, long life, long life, in equal life, long life, long life, in equal life. Long life, long life, long life. Pray for your cow to die today. 
That cow must die. That cow must die. That cow must die. That was setting boundaries. That cow must die. That cow must die. In the name of Jesus, give us other ways. Give us other means. 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 To survive, Marakatata, Repakata, Repakata, Moshoshobokata, Ropa Papa 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 Revive us again. Revive us again. Marunda kama husa katorobo katamage amanda. Those that are watching online, yes, pray. If you are watching online, raka shobo torobo da. Those that are watching online, in the name of Jesus. Those that are watching online, pray right now. Pray right now. As you are watching online, pray right now. Pray right now. Pray in your house. Pray in your office. Pray wherever you are. Stand up right now. Pray for that, for that cow to die. Pray for you not to live in the arena of death. Step out right now. Yes, 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 yes. Receive your deliverance. Receive your miracle. Raka Oshabata. Thank you, Jesus. Mandala Baka Toturobuda. Father, we are praying. Oh, we glorify your name. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Laziness must go. Anger must go. Rakatatatatabada. Bitterness must go. Rakashabakatomandalapaka. Boundaries must go. Shanda katolo bukatara. Increase must come. Masakatala baba baba forgiveness must come. Raka shata badada. We speak against death. We speak against death in the mighty name of Jesus. We capture every thought, every high thought, every argument. We cast down in the name of Jesus. We put all thoughts unto captivity to the obedience of Christ. In the name of Jesus, take us, O oh God, to a place called there. Take us, O oh God, to a place called there. Take us to get some money. Take us to get some money. Take us, O oh Lord, take it alive to a place called there. Take it alive to a place called there. Take it alive to a place called there. Shut up, pray, 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 pray. Take it alive to a place called there. Shika pa 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 Demons come out witchcraft witchcraft you shall not have power because from today we will stay in the arena of peace we will stay in the arena of of life we will stay in the arena of love in the name of Jesus we shall not stay in the arena of death marakatakata marakatata makakakaka Break the boundaries. Break the boundaries. Break the boundaries. Break the boundaries. Lord Jesus. Break the boundaries. Lord Jesus. Break the boundaries. 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 Oh Shamahenda Kata. Oh Jesus. Oh Jesus. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, we receive your word. We receive your anointing. We receive your grace. We receive the anointing. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. 
Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, my God. Can we clap our hands unto God? Can you say, wow? Hey. This was deep, huh? Very powerful. I can sense some bound that is a breaking. Hallelujah. Truly some boundaries are breaking and we are going to advance where there is going to be progress in your life. There is going to be fun. There is going to be fruitfulness. There is no way you can remain the same. If you see yourself remaining the same after such a message, uh, then Muroyewaje, I may not target us. Hallelujah. So we need to, in, I want you tomorrow to make sure, because we are uh, on holiday. It's, uh, tomorrow is holiday, isn't it? Yeah, so we are starting leaders. Make sure by nine o'clock uh, you are here so that we start in time, so that we give our father, uh, the Archbishop, time to really uh, move with us and teach us deeper. Hallelujah. As leaders. So everyone who wants to come to that service is free as long as you believe you are a leader. And all the women, those who are serving in different departments, it's a must for you to be there from the bishop uh, to the elders dist, uh, uh, and also uh, the deacons and everybody who is serving. It is important because you are leading in a certain way in the house of God. Whether you are an usher standing by the corner, that's leadership. Even though you are not part of the ushering leadership, but if you don't have knowledge, you can destroy yourself and others. Uh, in that little corner of yours. So we, we, we are a big church, and everyone has got a leadership responsibility somewhere, somehow. Even as a husband, it's being a leader. You might not be a leader in church departments, but at home you are a father. You have children, so it's leadership. So let's come and hear our father. Nine o'clock, we break at one. Then we go for lunch. Then two o'clock, uh, up to maybe 6 p.m. or so, we need to give Baba about four hours for him to, if he wants to teach and then minister to people. I think even if we break be around 6 o'clock, it is still good time. Hallelujah. Let's celebrate my father, my father, our father, our father, the Archbishop. Can we make some better noise? Glory, glory. Let's all shout tomorrow. Everyone shout tomorrow. Hey, tomorrow is not a day to miss. I want you to invite everyone that you can invite in Blawayo. Uh, let them come, invite your friend, invite even uh, those who missed today. Tell them that they are missing. This is not a time to watch online when you are in Blawayo. You have to come direct. Hallelujah. So let's, uh, we want to collect offering. Can we come and give unto the Lord? We are collecting offering. Let's have a song from praise and worship as we come and give. Don't miss tomorrow, no matter what. Even if you are visited, you can't miss what's happening here. Mm -hmm. Imagine someone is missing such stuff. Was when you miss such, such moments, such opportunities, when a father, a great father, a general has come, you, you, you are doing a big disfavor to your future, to your life and to everything about your life. So please, tomorrow, tell each and every eagle, yeah, I wish everyone was here to hear 
what we had today and we know tomorrow we are still here. Our Father is around. Father, we want to thank you. We bless your name for such a menu, a powerful, powerful, deep teaching with life-transforming revelations that we received from our Father. I can sense, oh Lord, that you are, you are now ready to lift us up, to lift ego life to another level, to lift each and everyone to another level as we end this year. We thank you, O Lord, for, uh, with such a message and a word that will end this year on a high note, full of blessings, full of life, and full of prosperity. You have come to open doors for us. So we offer our sacrifices of thanksgiving and our offerings, our tithes unto you, O Lord. I now pray, O oh Lord, for every child of ego life who is supposed to be here, even tomorrow, as our Father will be anointing us, anointing people, laying hands and praying for everyone. We are praying, O oh Lord, O oh Father, that everyone may receive something. Let there be nobody who come out of these two days of the Archbishop Revival Conference Oh, Lord, his visit to Bulawayo, empty-handed. We pray that we may go full, that we may be delivered. All the boundaries must be broken. Don't leave any boundary in my life and in everyone's life. In the name of Jesus, Holy Father, we thank you. We worship your name, for we have received your voice. Lord, we know. Oh, Lord, that you speak and the wise listen and they hearken. I thank you, Father, even for the offering. We bless your people as they go home. We pray that they prosper in the mighty name of Jesus and be protected by the blood of the Lamb. May all the people shout a big amen. Thank you. God bless you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's stand up and celebrate Jesus in the house. Hallelujah. Even as we celebrate our fathers and their taking over to the office. Come on, we can do better than that. Let's all on it and whistle and celebrate the gift of God in the house. Let's celebrate our father. Let's celebrate our fathers. Yes, we can do better. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, celebrate your breakthrough. Celebrate your breakthrough. You are advancing to another level. As you celebrate them, God is changing your life. Yes, let's keep on clapping and celebrating our end. Yes, let's continue clapping. Let's continue clapping. Don't be tired of celebrating your breakthrough. Yes, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Once again, as our Father is declared, the service ends here. Tell a neighbor to tell a friend and to tell a God.